Hello, my name is Hunter Kaufman. I'm a nature and arts educator here at the Ned Smith Center for Nature and Art. And uh, today we're out here in the woods to talk about spring wildflowers. So as we push through the last of this cold weather and head into the springtime, uh, we're gonna see the emergence of a lot of temporary wildflowers that really like uh, moist, cool weather. And so uh, April, May is a really good time to see these wildflowers, but there's one uh, that kind of has a bit of a head start on the rest of them. Uh, so today we are here to talk, of course, about skunk cabbage. Welcome to Ned Talks. So skunk cabbage is a plant that a lot of people don't necessarily think of as being a wildflower. But in fact, skunk cabbage is Pennsylvania's first wildflower to bloom. And it does so towards the end of January, even through February and March, when a lot of times there's still snow on the ground. And so if you look down here, this is actually some skunk cabbage coming up out of the ground. And at the time we're filming this, this is the end of January and you can see it's already growing. Uh, so skunk cabbage really likes these moist, wet, cool areas. So you can see we're kind of standing in a bit of overflow from the creek. Uh, it loves floodplains and areas like that. Uh, so skunk cabbage is part of the arum family, which includes a lot of other similar looking plants and one other fairly familiar wildflower you might know, uh, Jack in the Pulpit is actually in the same family too. Uh, and so all the plants in this family are kind of uniquely characterized by uh, some similar anatomy here. So uh, one of the things that makes this family unique is that structure of the plant. So we have this really neat looking outside leaf called a spathe. And on the inside of that leaf is actually the flower of the plant called the spadix. It's kind of a little cluster of flowers on the inside. Um, so that's kind of what sets them apart from other plants. And one of the really cool things about skunk cabbage and some of the other plants in the arum family uh, is they actually generate their own heat. They're what we call a thermogenic plant. Uh, so being a thermogenic plant, again, skunk cabbage can produce its own heat and it does this through a process called respiration, which is part of how the cabbage gets its own energy. So all plants photosynthesize, right? Uh, so what they're doing in photosynthesis is they're taking sunlight and carbon dioxide and creating glucose molecules out of it, which is sugar or the plant's energy. And those glucose molecules are stored in the roots of the skunk cabbage underground. Uh, it actually has a pretty extensive root system, so it's very well anchored in there. Um, and when the plant needs that glucose, it'll perform kind of the opposite process of photosynthesis called respiration. And in respiration, that glucose and oxygen from the environment uh, are coming together to break apart that glucose and as a result uh, that gives the plant energy and a byproduct of that is heat. And so the plant undergoes so much respiration that it can actually stay between 50 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit uh, while that spadix on the inside is growing here in the winter. Uh, so if you see, there's actually skunk cabbage breaking through the ice here. And what's helping it break through that ice is the heat from that respiration. That's what allows the plant to grow even when it's still snowy out. And that respiration, the rate is so high, uh, it's actually been compared to these plants to the rate of respiration of small mammals about the same size, which is incredible thinking that this is just a plant. And so the one thing we didn't touch on is the name of skunk cabbage. So as some of you might already know, uh, it kind of has a foul reputation. If you take some of the leaf or the stem and crush it up in your hands, it actually kind of smells like skunk, which is where the plant got its name. Um, so that's actually one of the ways that the plant is also pollinated, that foul smell. Some people compare it to carrion or dead things. Uh, that attracts flies and other insects, as well as that heat in the cold weather. Uh, both of those things work together to bring flies and other pollinators inside that spathe to crawl around that spadix or flower, and that's how the plant gets pollinated. 
So skunk cabbage, again, is a really awesome plant in Pennsylvania's first wildflower to bloom, so you can already find it out in the woods here. Uh, so as you're hiking around this spring and summer, keep an eye and a nose out for skunk cabbage. Until next time, this is Ned Talks.